CGI Eagles the movie. Hi again, I'm Ryan, your host for The Toast, and we're going to be talking about Assassin's Creed. And I've got to... Get, like, how do they function with these hoods on? Honestly. Okay. Based on a video game series of the same name, Assassin's Creed is about memory regression, living the lives of your ancestors through your DNA using a machine called the Animus, specifically involving key moments between the Assassins and the Templars, the Templars being the bad guys who want to control the world, the Assassins trying to stop them. It's an age-old tale. Now, I'm a huge fan of Assassin's Creed, and I understand that, yes, there's over 10 games worth of story here for them to try and fit in the movie that's under two hours. But with so much rich lore to pull from, it's a mystery to me why we got such a dull, disjointed, uninteresting movie. I mean, it really does boggle my mind when you've got like such a buffet of cool ideas, but you don't use them. Instead of following Desmond Miles, the character from the original games, we follow a new character called Cal Lynch, played by Michael Fassbender. Now this character, he's a bad guy, a Apparently, the, the, the movie doesn't even show you why he's a bad guy. Executed in prison, but revived by the Abstergo Corporation because his ancestor knows the location of the Apple of Eden. Jeremy Irons and Marie Cotillard head up Abstergo, which is basically the Templars, which is not a spoiler because it's they're obviously the bad guy. They're a pretty standard organization that wants to dominate the world through some means or another. This time it is with the Apple of Eden, which contains the genetic marker for free will. Again, if you play the games, this all does make sense in the long run. In, in the movie, it's barely touched on. What is the apple? Where does it come from? Well, there's no answers in this movie. Just play the games and you'll know, because it's pretty awesome. Now, I understand why they wanted to make a brand new character for the movies. I mean, if you just played as Desmond Miles like you do in the games, it's basically just a retelling of the video game. Nothing much interesting there. But the movie shouldn't go picking and choosing from story elements that are connected to a central character like the Apple of Eden without watering it down so much that it loses all impact. When I played the first game, it was awesome because you're playing it in a historical setting. Yes, there's a guy set in the future, but still, you, you're there in the Middle Ages. And in the Middle Ages, you had the Apple of Eden, and by the end of the game, you're like, oh, what is this weird artifact? Is it kind of magical? What, what's up with this? But by the end of the game, spoiler alert, boom, this giant glowing map comes out of the Apple, and you realize this is a piece of heightened technology. It's one of the few moments in video games where it really made me go, whoa, this is bigger and grander scheme of things than I expected. That's also just because I really like like pieces of technology that are in the past for some reason, like out of time. It, it's really intriguing and it makes a cool story. And I was really hoping this movie built on that right away. It doesn't. Now the movie definitely has its moments, don't get me wrong. Stunts, choreography, visual effects were all fantastic and this time that we do spend in 1492 was a lot of fun. Sadly we only visit it three times between the painfully slow 2016 story of Michael Fassbender not making friends and taking his shirt off. Between the Assassins and the Templars, the Templars are definitely the more interesting group. At one point during the multiple slow parts of this movie, Jeremy Irons even explains that their methods of control throughout the years have changed. They started with religion, then politics, and now consumerism. That stuff's really interesting. More interesting than stabbing people with your wrists? Yes. But nowhere near as fun. I couldn't be bothered to dig out my wrist blade for this video, and now I'm regretting it, because that would have been a good gag. Oh well. As a fan of the franchise, I can't help but be disappointed by this movie. I mean, it tried to live up to this huge world created by the games. It tried and failed. It tried and died. That was a Dune reference. I do want to stress that for everything wrong with Assassin's Creed, I didn't hate it. It actually does have some awesome action and some genuinely spine-tingling moments. That just isn't enough. This movie could have benefited by slowing down the storytelling and introduce more characters and events from the game to really cement its place in the universe. Speaking of characters I really would have liked to have seen more of is Ariane LaBelle. I mean, she I can't even remember her character's name. I don't think it's ever said in the movie. She's the badass lady assassin. She was really cool and I wanted to know more about her, but she really, she was like Michael Fassbender's tag-along buddy through the whole thing. He barely acknowledges she's there at some points and, and, and she was worth watching, especially her outfit. Her outfit was gorgeous. The design of this movie is beautiful. The detail in all their outfits is really great. It's just a shame that you never get to see it because they don't stop jumping around. Speaking of acrobatics, yes, there's a lot of suspension and disbelief involved in watching this film. But like I always say, you have to allow for the fantastical, otherwise you will not get imaginative filmmaking. In the end, unfortunately, Assassin's Creed is just a plain piece of toast. 
Yeah. There's so much potential to build on it, but there's nothing appetizing there if you're already a fan of the series. This is definitely one of those times, if you don't know a lot about Assassin's Creed, if you're not really a fan of it, you might actually enjoy this a lot more as its own independent, fresh start to the story. But through my eyes, of course, I'm looking for everything that's familiar to me, and granted there's a lot of familiar stuff, but it's just stuff. It's literally physical stuff, not no story, no atmosphere, no world. Every high point this movie had was matched by an equal low point, which just kind of cancelled it out as another video game movie attempt that didn't quite land. From a leap. Into a haystack. Anyway, if you want to check out more from me, click, click, click away, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers! Honestly though, Abstergo has the worst security staff in the history of shady organizations. They are nothing compared to that one guy from Tron who followed Sam out onto the ledge on top of the building. That guy deserved a medal.